There are times, often most times, when I have seen the world go past. When I have seen the world continue on. When everything feels like it has a direction. And I am just left standing and staring. As everything seemed so ordained for everything else and for everybody else around me. Their lives were straightforward and normal. Nothing seemed out of place. It was almost like their whole destiny had a sat-nav and the sat-nav was in their hand. And there was just me. There's always just been me. I'm beginning to wonder though, is that a bad thing? Is it a bad thing that my life isn't straightforward? That my life isn't normal? Often though, this difference of direction and understanding, of perception and wisdom. Often this difference leaves me in a completely strange position, in a very strange position, where I am constantly a foreigner, no matter where I go, where I am constantly left having to create some sort of a system of understanding the world around me and the people around me. Almost as if I am using a translation dictionary. I'm still not sure if it's even enough. And I'm not sure if it's worth it. For after all, after all, I can just create my own world and live and inhabit my own world, or maybe even many worlds. In these worlds, I can create a whole new definition of life. I can create a whole new definition of what it means to be alive. Of what it means to feel. In these worlds, I can create sensuality. I can create touch and movement that aligns me with the rest of the universe. I can create, <laughs> I guess I can actually create my own universe. In these worlds, like this world, all that matters is that I'm in tune with growing and growth. That I'm in tune with self-love. surround myself with the ability to feel myself and not just feel how the world wants me to feel or wants to see me. In these worlds, both glamour and nature can finally meet. worlds, the authenticity of my spirituality can be met. I 
I can find a peace that moves, a peace that flows, a peace that I am welcome to. I move how I wish to. I feel how I wish to. It is all fairly strange to anybody else. But to me, well to me this is what living looks like. It's to feel in tandem and to feel as one within yourself. And to feel good. But it's not always quite so serious. Sometimes it's very, very frivolous. create within my own space. It's not reality. And sometimes reality really isn't quite so amazing.
into my world. <laughs> Unfortunately, things like this are actually made worse the more I interact with the world, the more I see the pain and the carnage, the more I see the suffering, and the more I experience, I guess the more I experience life.
think the most annoying thing about everything is that in reality, people fetishize my life or my identity. I'm, you know, that weird, alternative, strange black girl. That manic pixie dream girl. The girl that never really fit in, but was somehow made interesting. Sometimes people ironically approach my identity. It can be more than just a little bit irritating. There are times when my memories come to me slowly, haunting, creeping, approaching, ever so gradually. I never quite see it coming. I always wonder, how do I remember so much? from when I was so young. But it's because there were so many misunderstandings that I now understand, that I'm coming to grips with. There are misunderstandings that I didn't realize what they were. The world said I was the problem. So I believe them. All the time, every time, I believe them. Until one day, I took a test on a paper and a doctor told me that I had ASD. Autistic Spectrum Disorder, she called it. I looked at her and... Suddenly everything felt less like a dream. From that day on, cogs began to fit. Memories materialised. My feet hit the ground. And suddenly I could finally hear the world around me for what it really was. I could see properly. I could feel properly. Even if that meant it was painful or uncomfortable or all just too much. But finally everything made sense. The periods of what others would call loneliness are often my sanctuary. I can finally be free. The trees speak to me. The air caresses me. The ground comforts me. And the warmth well, even though I hate the sunlight sometimes, the warmth reminds me of some kind of strange serenity. It reminds me of all the colors of the spectrum. It reminds me that there is more than one way of being.
throughout all of this, throughout all of this, my spirituality has really saved me. Before psychologists and teachers and social workers and counsellors and before anything else, my spirituality, my dream, my intuition has been the one guiding force in my life. Not necessarily religion, but something deeper than that. Something that goes beyond man-made things and man-written things. That said, learning about the gods and goddesses of my people has saved me beyond my imagination. Oya, Oshun, Yemoja, Oba, Obatala, Ogun, Oloku, Orumila, Oturua, Shongo, Eshu, Daekbara, Aja, Aja, I'm still healing from so much, but I am so close to fully getting there. Though I know it will never fully be completed, this process of healing. But the misunderstandings are ongoing. They will never really stop. How I handle my life, privately and publicly. Who I am privately and publicly. That concept of learning how to constantly translate. How I feel and what the world is telling me. It will never end. And that's okay, because I'm enjoying my healing.